If you enjoy my tutorials and would like to see more, please think about contributing to my Patreon account at patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. Okay, uh, continuing this series on advanced uh, Android shell commands, uh, we're going to be looking at uh, going into a true root today of a Debian system on an Android device and starting up mPlayer. So I'm already logged into my shell, and again, these tutorials assume that you already know, uh, you know, the basics of a Linux system, or at least a Unix system of some sort. Um, you know a little bit about ADB, Android debugging shell, and your device is already rooted. Be sure also to back things up so you can recover if you screw stuff up. But you should be doing that anyway. Okay. So uh, I'm in my, on my Android device here uh, in a shell. I'm going to go to uh, my internal storage SD card here. And the first thing I do is I'm going to mount uh, my Churu image. So if I list here, you can see I have a couple of files in here. I have one called uh, Debian ARM image. I made that yesterday using the bootstrap. I have videos on that. And I'm going to mount that to this folder, uh, Deb. So if I list out right now the Deb folder, there's nothing in there. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I have a full version of BusyBox on here, which gives me uh, true and mounting capabilities. So I'm going to say mount-o loop and type. In this case, it's an ext4. That's just how I formatted the image, uh, the image name, and where I want to mount it. Now, if I list out that deb folder again, you can see the Debian file system. Now, uh, before I true root into that, I'm going to go into that directory, and I'm going to mount uh, again, I'm not going into detail on true rooting, but depending on what you're doing, there's a couple of things you probably want to mount when starting a true root. Uh, your dev folder, your uh, PTS devices, your proc folders, and your sysfs are a few. Um, but really today with what we're doing, all we need to do is mount the dev uh, folder. So. Uh, to do this, I'm going to use the BusyBox version of mount because the default one on Android won't allow me to do this. But I'm going to say BusyBox mount dash dash bind forward slash dev. So that's saying mount the real folder on our Android device. And I'm going to say to the dev folder that we're currently in on this Debian file system. That way we have access to all the hardware, all the devices on the Android system. Done. Another thing we want to do here, uh, and I think I'm probably list, uh, mentioned this in the last video, if we list out uh, our dev folder for FB, which is our frame buffer, it says no devices, uh, no, no such file or directory. It's because by default uh, on most Android devices, the frame buffer device is actually under a graphics folder. So what we're going to do here, since uh, M player is going to look for it under device FB0, we're going to use a link and make a symbolic link to device graphics FB0. And we're going to link that to FB0 in our device folder. And of course, that will also uh, associate it inside our true root since we mounted our dev folder right here to our true root environment. So basically, when mPlayer in this case, or whatever program you're using, looks for the framework buffer device here, it's saying, yeah, uh, we have that. It's not here. Look here. OK? So we did that. Now let's uh, do one last thing. At one point in this tutorial, we're going to need to know our screen resolution of our Android device. There's a few different ways you can do that. The way I have found that has worked on most devices for me is dump sys window, and then we'll grep because that outputs a lot of information. We're just going to say screen with a capital S, and it gives us a few options here, but we want this unrestricted screen, which in the case of my tablet is 800 by 480. Now that we know that, we can go into our true root environment. So I'm going to say true root, and again, you have to be root to do this, dot, meaning the current directory, because I am in the directory of my file system. And I'm going to say, uh, we're going to start up bin bash to give us a bash shell. Uh, I am now going to go into my root directory. I am root and I'm going to say list. I have a bunny.mp4, that's big buck bunny uh, that I downloaded off of YouTube. I wrote, downloaded a lower resolution version. Uh, first off, my display is only 800 by 480, um, but also we're going to be writing to the frame buffer, which is a little bit slower than than other techniques, but that's how we're going to have to do it here, because the only way I know how to do it on an Android device. Um, and if you've watched the last video on frame buffer device, I explained that a little bit more in detail there. 
Well, in this Debian environment, I have already installed mPlayer, so let's go ahead and give it a try. If I type in just mPlayer and give it the name of the file and try to start it, it's going to tell me here in a second. There we go. It's trying. Uh-oh, couldn't open X11 display because we're not running X11. And it's here you can see VO for video out. It's trying to use an X display, which does not exist. So I'm just going to kill that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the same command, but add something to it. I'm going to say dash VO for video out. And I'm going to tell it to use FBDEV, use the frame buffer device, uh, which it will look for, again, under uh, dev forward slash uh, FB0. And I will hit enter at this point. And as you can see, we get the video playing on top of our Android interface. Now, we can't really interact with it because we're, writing, we're just writing raw information to the screen. You can see there's a little bit of flickering going on. If we try to do anything, you can see that I'm still moving the Android desktop and it's flickering because they're trying to overwrite. They're both writing to the frame buffer. Um, so that's an issue we're gonna take care of here in a moment. But just so you know that we are writing to that. But you notice it's up in the top left corner. Now I, I just killed it and it took a second to clear because it's gonna stay there until something rewrites to the video device, the frame buffer device. Um, let's say we want it centered. What we can do is we can go dash FS, which stands for full screen. And it doesn't really go full screen um, because we're writing to the frame buffer device. So it's writing it at whatever resolution the video is. So we still have this right now. It's a black border, but if any time the Android interface tries to update the frame buffer, as if I move it here, now we can see the Android interface in the background. And uh, again, uh, anything on the Android device trying to update the frame buffer will make our video flicker. Let's go ahead and control Z to kill that and add one more thing out. Let's say we did want to try to make it full screen. What we can do is we can add the zoom command and we can say dash X. And as we looked up the resolution of my device is 800 dash Y by 480. And here you can see it is full screen, but you also notice it's playing a little bit slower. Again, we're writing directly raw information to the frame buffer device. It's not the most efficient way to do it, and I don't know how to make it full screen without it running slow. The only thing I can think of, and I haven't tried this, is actually um, saving the video at the resolution I want. So I could resave this video as 800 by 480, and it might work. As you can see, this video itself is uh, 640 by 360. I don't know if the larger file size would make it run slow, and in this case, it's just the zoom that's making it run slow. I did try adding to this um, dash frame drop, which should drop frames if it's running slow, but it doesn't seem to make a difference. It still runs slow, so that didn't work. But maybe someone a little more familiar with, um, you know, uh, M player configurations would know a little bit more about how getting that to work efficiently. But how do we uh, fix this whole flickering of the Android interface? Well, what we can do is we can kill the Android interface. Uh, and the way we can do that is exiting out of our chur root and writing, running this command, set prop space uh, ctl dot stop media. And also another command set prop ctl dot stop Zygote. Now, Zygote is the process that Android uses to spawn all the other Android processes. So killing that will kill all the Android applications, all the interfaces. So we'll do that. And as you can see on the tablet, everything's gone black because we killed the Android desktop. Now we can go back into our chur root, go to the folder the video's in, and run our uh, mplayer uh, command again. And as you can see, we have the video playing here, no flickering. I can do this, we're not touching anything. Now another thing, since we killed the Android interface, we've also killed all the buttons. So I can hit the power button, the volume buttons, the, the menu buttons over here. Nothing happens because they've all been disconnected uh, from any software. Uh, so why would you wanna do this? Well, besides just understanding a little bit better how things work and having fun, 
One practical use I could think of is um, if I wanted to hand this tor uh, tablet to my daughter so she can watch a video, um, if I gave her an irregular video application, if she touched the screen or the home button or the menu button or the power button or the volume button or the back button, it would stop the video or she would fast forward in the video. But here I can hand this to her and besides throwing it on the ground and breaking it, she's not going to mess up what's going on there. Um, so that's just one thought I had, and I'm sure there's other ways to do that. Uh, but uh, you can, might be saying, well, that's kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, how do I do this without uh, using the Android debugging bridge to get into the device? Well, first off, let's exit out of our chur root. By the way, I hit Control C to kill M player. And as you can see, the picture's still up on the screen because the frame buffer hasn't been refreshed. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to run the same command before that we used to kill the Android display. But instead of stop, I'm going to say start. So we're going to start both those services up, which is going to start all the other Android services up. There we go. Now, you can run shell scripts on Android. Again, it is a Linux uh, environment. It's a Linux kernel. So what I'm going to do here is show you that I have, in the folder above this, um, a file I called video.sh. Go into that. There we go. And with three lines of code, we can kill the Android interface, start the chur root. Oh, by the way, you would have to have the chur root already mounted for this to work, um, which you could put in another script or at the top of this script. But uh, if it's already mounted, we can kill the Android interface, go into our chur root, start M player, and play this video with the commands that we put in earlier. And then as soon as that video is done playing, we can restart the Android interface. And you can run this shell script from the Android interface using you know, con connect bot or some other terminal or shell interface that you can get for Android. So I'm gonna run it from here just to make it a little bit easier, but I'm gonna say sh. Now you, because the folder I'm in is, a, is the storage on Android, which uses a FAT32, I can't change mod plus X to uh, change the permissions of that file. So I'm gonna have to say, sh to run the shell, but we're gonna say run this. So you can see as soon as I start running that script, it kills the Android interface and it starts up our video. And now this video will continue playing until it reaches its end. So if it's a two hour video, it will go two hours. If it's um, 10 minutes, we'll go for 10 minutes. But as soon as that video is done playing, uh, M player will escape and I'll hit uh, up arrow here to try to jump ahead in the video, which will kill M player in this particular case right away it uh, continues our script and restarts the Android interface. So you can put that in a shell script, uh, start it from within the Android interface, which will kill the Android interface, start M player, and when M player is done, it will restart the Android interface. Um, and that is one option. Uh, I also believe, and I haven't tested this, even though the buttons don't seem to be working when we're in that uh, uh, M player with the Android uh, killed, they don't seem to be working. I think that if you do a long hold on the power button for 10 seconds or whatever, it would still restart the device. So you can always get out of it that way as well. Because um, otherwise you just have to wait till the video ends. There's no other way to stop it without hooking up a USB device to it or USB to your computer. So uh, that's just a quick look, a little bit of fun with M player and um, the Android interface using a Debian Cheru or whatever uh, distribution of Linux you like uh, that's compiled for ARM. Uh, you can mount that image and go ahead and start running whatever programs you want. Now in the next tutorial, we're actually gonna get into starting up a full Xorg session. So you can have multiple windows open. It'll be a very basic look at that uh, and, and the basic concept of it, killing the Android interface, starting Xorg. Um, There'll still be some configuration that I'm not going to get into in that video, as such as touchscreen configuration, but you will see that it is possible without any VNC interface, which is something some people do. But you can really, truly kill the Android interface and start up Xorg and have a true Linux environment running on the Android kernel using a, in this case, we'll use a Debian uh, file system. So. That will be next week. I hope you're enjoying this series of Android videos. They were voted on by my Patreon viewers as this series. If you like this topic or other topics, you can have a say on what video's coming up. 
uh, by becoming a patron of mine over at patreon.com. It's patreon.com forward slash melx1000. There should be a link in the description. And there you can become a patron of mine, help support my video, my work, uh, and my all the tutorials I do. And you also have a little more say on uh, what videos I do. I listen to all my Patreon viewers, you can suggest stuff, and uh, each time I start a new series, uh, patron, patrons in a certain uh, level get to vote on the topics uh, that I do next, and Android was what was picked last time around, and so uh, if you want to see more of these, you can definitely have a say if you're one of my patrons. So. I thank you for watching, whether you're a patron or not. I appreciate your views, and I, as always, I hope that you have a great day, and please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K, and as always, have a great day. Today we're going to be looking at using Bootstrap to create arm images for devices such as pogo plugs or to get Debian on the This must download the file. You could do four connections and speed up your download. Another option would be is sometimes servers have mirrored servers. So even though you have that original server, you may have another server here and here that you can download from. And Axel allows you to do that too. You have the same file on multiple servers and you're